A little bit of context as to what made this story absolutely terrifying for me. I was 11 and at the time we lived in Florida. Life was kind of what you expect for Florida. It rained a lot and was almost tropical. I absolutely loved it there and I loved rain as a child, not playing in it, just watching and listening to it. Whenever there was a massive thunderstorm, we would typically see a damaged fuse box or one that was absolutely burnt to a crisp and our power would be out for long periods of time. The longest being two weeks. We didn't usually mind it much, the only thing that was bad was that there was no TV. It was kind of expected every time there was a thunderstorm of even moderate size that the power would go out. My dad worked the graveyard shift at the hospital, meaning usually from 9pm to 7am. He was usually around when the storms happened, so he would check the fuse box so that my mom wouldn't have to go into the rain. Now, on to the story. I believe it was a Tuesday, if not a Monday. It was fairly early into the night, around 8 o'clock. It was slow as Tuesdays usually are and we didn't do anything that day. We all just hung out at home and did whatever. A thunderstorm was rolling in quickly and it had hit just about 20 minutes later. Late night thunderstorms aren't something that seemed to happen often, but it happened. It hung around like storms usually do. It started off as expected with lightning striking our house or at least the fuse box and the power went out. My dad was getting ready for work and after a couple of minutes went to check it out. What happened next is absolutely indescribable. My dad was out there longer than normal, longer than expected. Now, my dad is an enormous dude and he was then too. So seeing him come in the house frantically and scared for his life astonished me. He came in and tried to tell my mom quietly and calmly that the box had been cut. I had overheard this conversation and I didn't understand why this freaked my dad out so much. But the words kept running through my stupid little brain and then I finally caught on. My stomach almost dropped as I finally understood that one word. The box had been cut, tampered with. It wasn't even burnt this time, so we must have mistaken us being hit with lightning. Needless to say, he didn't go to work that night. He instead watched over us. Me and my little brother both slept in our parents' room that night. This is where my memory cuts off because I slept the rest of that night, but according to my parents, the story didn't stop there. Our landline rang and an unknown voice came over saying he would slip my throat and hang me off of our porch for everyone to see. My parents both say that he then let out the most terrifying stomach churning laugh that will scar them for life. We then called the police. I wish I could tell you why we hadn't called the police before this, but we didn't. I, I guess my dad thought that he could protect us just fine. The police came to our house after about 20 minutes considering we lived in a very rural area. Not many in Florida, but they exist. The only trace the guy left behind were muddy footprints. The footprints were outside, but the oddest part about them is that they were nowhere in particular. This psychotic fuck was circling our house for no apparent reason in the rain. Usually there would be signs of break-ins or the prints would lead to a particular window, but this guy circled our house over and over. The footprints were overlapping each other like they were stacked. How he got our number, I have no idea. Now, the next part is absolutely surreal to me. The police went into the house to check the fuse box. Keep in mind our only phones at the time was a landline and my dad's damaged phone. When police entered our house, they noticed the landline had been fucking cut. I couldn't make this shit up if I wanted to. The motherfucker was in our house for god knows how long. The only comforting thing is that he couldn't have been in our house the entire night because of the footprints. While we were outside, the guy took presumably the knife he wanted to murder me with and cut the line of our landline when we were talking to the police. The police found no footprints inside the house that morning, so I honestly have no idea how this person got into our house and I'm willing to bet that they didn't either. Despite this, the police searched our entire house that late night slash early morning and they patrolled the surrounding area for a month at least. 
just searching for the guy. We left Florida shortly after, so we don't know exactly how long they searched for. I would only presume it was for the month that we stayed in Florida while moving. They found absolutely no trace of the guy, but luckily he left us alone for good. I am now a 22-year-old man absolutely terrified of thunderstorms and rainstorms. The reason I tell this story is because I didn't know anything past the fuse box being cut. I didn't know that he wanted to kill me or that he was in our house to cut the landline. I didn't learn until about two years ago when I was 20 and it recently resurfaced in my memory. I don't think any lessons can be learned from this other than that there are some fucked up people in this world. So, this happened July 14th, 2016. Me, my sister, and my brother's friend went to this abandoned house at my old neighborhood to do a photo shoot. My brother's friend is a photographer and wanted some pictures for his Instagram, so we went to the abandoned house we would always pass by while driving. There was an old mattress in the backyard, an animal skull under their front porch, dead animals all around the house, and so much more creepy shit. There was also a cornfield right next to the house, so we decided to take some pictures near there. As we were taking pictures, I look to my left and I see a man with suspenders and a hat sitting in a carriage with no top on it. I can't explain what it looked like, but I'm gonna assume it was a carriage. He's facing the other way, so his back is towards us. My sister and my brother's friend just brush it off and take some pictures of the cornfield. I was very curious to see who this was, so I walk a little closer to the man. And he just slowly turns his head and stares at me with a blank face for the longest time. I start to get a little freaked out by the fact that he's just sitting there staring at us, not even moving at all. We all get a little freaked out and start to walk back towards the way we came from. As we're walking back, we hear the loudest gunshot I have ever heard in my entire life. We all ran for our lives, so fast that I could have tripped at any moment. 30 seconds pass of us running and we finally stop and take a minute to process what the fuck just happened. The gunshot was so loud and clear, it sounded like it was inches away from us. We take a second to breathe because all of us were out of breath. As I'm processing what just happened, I turn around and see the man bolting towards us. My heart drops and we instantly run faster than we've ever ran. I was so out of breath, I felt like I was going to pass out at any minute. I wanted to stop to take a second to breathe, but we couldn't. The man was still sprinting towards us. After what felt like an hour of running, we finally stopped. The man was nowhere to be seen. We felt so relieved and sat down. Then we realized we didn't even recognize where we were. We were lost. We had run so far that we didn't even know where we were. As we were walking down the road, we found a gas station and decided to stop there to get something to eat. We walked in and we all went different ways in the store and grabbed what we wanted. We were still sweating and breathing super heavily, so the girl at the cash register asked us what was wrong. We told her the whole story, bought our stuff, and went outside to the back of the store. We then sat down to eat our stuff. The lady came outside with a cigarette and told us that the man's wife had died of a heart attack a few years ago, and that he's extremely depressed and has some mental issues. She said that he tries to kill anyone who steps foot on his property. She then said that he comes into her store to buy cigarettes and gives her nasty looks every time. We all looked at each other shocked at the fact that if we hadn't ran fast enough we could have been killed. We were eventually able to call someone to pick us up, said bye to the lady, and got home safely. I live in a more rural area in New Jersey surrounded by farms. At the time, I was a 15-year-old girl in her second year of high school. There, I was a member of our school's debate team. Once a year, we would have themed debate events where other schools come to our school during the weekend. Well, I was chosen to wear a costume which was a medieval dress. My dad was going to bring me to school, but we stopped at a gas station for something to eat for breakfast. 
While we were waiting in line, I saw a man getting out of an old green pickup truck and come inside. He had a long, straggly white beard and wore a trucker hat that said, Hoyt. He grabbed a snack and stood behind us in line. I didn't think anything of it until I heard him whisper close to my ear. I like your hair. It smells pretty. My dad didn't hear him, but just turned around giving a simple nod to him while I stared forward, extremely creeped out by what I just heard. It was then that I told my dad what I heard. He didn't think anything of it until we saw the guy inside almost glaring straight at us in the car. We left and I kind of just pushed the whole thing to the back of my mind. This was until a few weeks later. I was waiting for the bus to school, not even thinking about the event that happened before. Suddenly, slowly driving by the house was a rusted green pickup truck. And before it sped away, the window rolled down a bit and I spotted the word Hoyt on the man's hat. How the man found out where we lived, I have absolutely no idea. I was about to run inside, but the bus came a few moments after. So I went to school, almost in tears. The rest of the school year passed without another sighting of him and I was happy for summer vacation to begin. The last day of school, I had the choice of going out or staying home to watch the dogs. Wanting to relax, I stayed home with the three dogs. They were running outside while I was playing my Xbox 360. I really didn't want to deal with them inside since they were always so energetic. It was about 9pm when my dog, Rocky, began barking aggressively, followed by the other two dogs. I was about to step out, but I stopped myself and looked out the door. Doing that was probably the smartest thing I ever did because at the gate was the all too familiar white beard and the hat with Hoyt clearly printed on it. The dogs were jumping at the fence and snapping at the man, stopping him from opening the gate. I locked the door, beginning to cry. I was afraid of what the guy could do to our dogs, but I knew I had to call the cops first. It took them about five minutes to get to the house, but by the time they were there, the man was gone. I gave my report as they contacted my parents and searched the yard. I became sick to my stomach when they reported to me and my parents that they found a roll of duct tape and a pocket knife at the back gate. I still think about what could have happened if the dogs weren't outside to warn me about the man. The man never returned and was never caught. After that incident, I'm now a college student in Florida in my junior year. Our school security always drives around the apartments keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. However, even after about half a decade and a thousand miles distance, I still get nervous whenever I'm here alone, thinking that once again I'll see the white beard in that all-too-familiar Hoyt hat.